Being able to attach or snap an axe, a weapon or any piece of equipment on a character is a pretty common re feature. Let's see how we can do it. In this video, I will show you how to rig equipment slot so that we can snap a weapon or any piece of equipment to a given controller and how to switch from one to the other. We will also build a mechanism that will allow us to deal with double-ended weapons and accessories. And we'll control all of this with a very handy custom property. Let's get started. For this lesson, as usual, I will be using my mannequin I created for the Art of Effective Rigging course. I've also modeled a two-handed axe that will serve as the equipment we want to snap into the ends or the back of our character. The first thing to do before we create a deformation bone for the axe is to reset its position in object mode by selecting it and pressing Alt-A. From there, I will create a new bone and I will scale it a bit so that it's a little smaller. The size of the bone doesn't matter. This is going to be our deformation bone for the axe, so I will call it Death Battle Axe. As I commonly do, I don't want to work directly on the deformation bone, so I will duplicate it called this new bone target with the prefix TGT. And in pose mode, I will add a copy transform from this target bone onto the deformation bone by pressing Ctrl Shift to see copy transform. To attach the axe to the rig, I will simply copy the name of the deformation group Death Battle Axe. We can then select the object, go into its vertex option, create a new vertex group and call it Death Battle Axe. Now we can go to the modifier stack and add an armature modifier and source our armature. So from there, the axe won't be moving following the bone because we haven't assigned any vertices to this vertex group. To fix this, we just need to go into edit mode on the axe, select all the vertices Select the bone group and click Assign with a full influence. Getting back into object mode, we can see the axe snapping onto the controller bone and now we can move this controller bone to control the axe. So we want to be able to snap the axe on both ends or on the back of the character. But I want to be able to still control the axe separately. So let's first duplicate the target bone and then in pose mode, constrain the target bone with this newly created bone with a copy transform constraint. This is going to be our axe controller. I will then move this newly created bone into a new layer so that we can isolate it and work with a cleaner workspace. Bone orientation and organization is pretty important whenever you're rigging, so I'd like to go into the armature option and display the names and axes. I've also enabled the in front option so that the bone is always being seen on top of any object. To be able to snap and control the axe at the same time, we need to create an intermediary bone. So I will duplicate my control bone, scale it down and call this new bone mechanism. I can now parent my controller bone to this mechanism bone, so that whenever the mechanism bone will move, the child will move, but we will still be able to move the controller. Let's now create the target slot where the axe is going to snap. I'm duplicating the controller bone and roughly placing it into the right hand. I will properly name it with the dot R suffix so that Blender can identify it as a right side. I will add the controller bone and then from the end bone, I will add the copy transform constraint onto our mechanism bone. So now the axe is snapping to the end based on the influence of this bone. While the axe is snapping it to the end of our character, it's not properly oriented. To easily fix this, I will go into pose mode, select the end mechanism bone, and I will rotate it on its Y axis until the blade of the axe is aligned with the end orientation. You can also refine the position of the axe this way. To make this transformation the default position of the bone, I will simply press Ctrl A and apply pose. And don't forget to check the only selected bone option. 
Now whenever I will enter edit mode, we can see that the bone keep this transformation since this is its default transformation. I will now right click in edit mode on the bone and symmetrize it so that it's on the other side. Then in pose mode, I will constrain the mechanism bone of the axe with a new copy transform so that it will snap onto the other side. We can then fix the default position of the left bone the same way we did for the right one. I will then rename the constraint so that it's easier to identify them. From there, we can toggle the constraint to snap the axe on the right end, left end, or not to snap it at all. To create the slot on the back of our character, I will simply create a new bone, place it in the back and snap the axe as we did using a new copy transform constraint. The process is exactly the same as before, as we can refine the position of the bone in pose mode and apply its transformation as its rest pose. So I will speed up a bit the video while I'm doing this. Once we are done, we can display whether your deformation or end control bone and parent the different slot to a relevant bone. For example, I will parent the back bone onto the chest bone of my character the little downside about this mechanism is that the axe is not rotating on a proper pivot point when on the back. To fix this, I will duplicate the snap bone and I will make it slide onto its normal Y axis. Once it's aligned with the spine of our character, we're done. We can then parent the snap mechanism bone to this newly created bone. From there, we will be able to manipulate the axe once on the back with a proper pivot point that will look more natural. There is a last improvement that needs to be done, is that with our current mechanism, if we scale the torso of our character, the axe will inherit the scaling because it's directly parented to the spine or chest of our character. We can easily get rid of this problem by creating intermediary bones. In edit mode, I will duplicate the bone and scale it down. Since it's a duplication, it's parented to the target chest. Now I need to create a third bone that is going to be our intermediary bone. Now I want to parent my controller bone to the intermediary bone and we will isolate the intermediary bone by parenting it to the root of our character or you can just unparent it completely. I will get rid of those custom shapes that we will be creating a little later in this video and the yellow color is due to bone group assignment so we will see that a little later. Now we will select the smallest bone then our intermediate bone and add a copy location and copy rotation to this bone. So now it will follow the location and the rotation of the chest, but not the scaling. To create the switch between the different position, I will simply duplicate the controller bone and move it on top of the axe. This is going to be our property bone. Then in pose mode, I will go into the bone option and I will create a new custom property. To make it cleaner, I will edit it and give it a relevant name and I will switch the values to integers. This way the property will act more as a button than a slider. From there, we can go back onto our constraint bone, select the constraint, right click on the influence and add a new driver. While I generally use average value as a type, we will use the script expression this time. The idea is to be able to switch position of the axe by entering different value into the driver. So before we take care of the expression, we first need to source our data path for the property bone. So we need to get back onto our property bone, go into its custom property, right click on the value and select copy data path. Then let's get back onto our driver, right click on it and edit it. In the input type, we will select single property and we will source the armature. In the path, I will press Ctrl V to copy the data path we have previously created. From there, we can see that the driver is outputting a value of minus two. And this is because we are using the variable minus three and adding one from the custom property. 
If I now go back to my custom property and increase the range of this custom property, increasing its range and value to 4 will make the driver outputting a value of 1 because it's the variable minus 3, so it's 4 minus 3. We can now copy the driver and pass it onto the other constraint, but we will need to edit those constraints by increasing the value. So here are minus 2 and on the top one, minus 1. In the end, I will modify those values because it doesn't really make sense. With this incremented value created, whenever I will switch the value of the controller, it will snap on the different slot because it will activate different copy transform. To make things cleaner, I will reduce the range of the custom property from 0 to 3. And I will also fix all the drivers so that whenever the value is at zero, the axe won't snap at all. At one, it will snap on the first controller, two on the second and three on the third. The second copy transform override the first and the third copy transform override the second. From there, I will quickly create a pair of custom shape for both the axe and the property bone. And here we are done with the base mechanism. To be able to use the two-ended mechanism, we need our arm to be set to inverse kinematic. The idea is to create secondary bone that will act a bit as the snapping bone we have created previously. So in edit mode, I will duplicate and scale down both my IK and controllers. I will parent the inverse kinematic controller to those bones. So now moving the inverse kinematic controller is this possible, but it's also following those new mechanism bone. Then in pause mode, I will get rid of their custom shape to make it easier to read. Now, as for the backpack, we need to create another bone and scale it down. Note that I'm doing this on both ends, even if I'm not showing it in the video. In pause mode, I will select the latest bone we have created and I will add a copy transform constraint on the secondary bone. I will do the same on the right side, select the smallest bone, then the second bone add the copy transform. When I move the smallest bone, the end follow because it's the child of the second bone. So if we put a driver onto this copy transform constraint, we can make the end whether following or not the small bone. Since the end controller are used to manipulate the axe, we can't use the axe to manipulate the end controller. That would create a bug called cycling dependency. In edit mode, I will duplicate the axe controller so that we have a new controller that will be the master. When activated, this controller will manipulate the axe and both inverse kinematic ends. I've removed its custom shape from the time being. I will select it, then select the axe controller and add a copy transform. This copy transform will override the previously created copy transforms. Now in edit mode, I will select the small end mechanism bone and I will parent them to this master controller. Now the ends are following the master controller and so does the axe. So I will rapidly rename the constraint to make them clearer. And from there we will create our new driver. So I will first select the mechanism bone of the axe, add a new driver, switch to average value and I will source the armature. We need to create the single custom property, so I will select the custom property bone, create a new custom property, and copy the data path. I can now go back onto the driver, right click to edit it, and pass the data path into the single property of the variable. Once I've checked it's working, I will just select the driver, right click on it to copy it, and I will pass it on both ends mechanism bone. Now if the master axe property is set to zero, I can switch between the different slots for my axe. If I activate the master axe property and switch to the master axe controller, it both control the axe and the ends. The only thing we have to do now is to reposition in pose mode the master controller and also both mechanism bone for the ends in a more natural manner. Once you are done with this, I advise you 
to reset a bit the position of the master controller so that it's aligned with the world space. It will make animation curve easier to read later on for the animator. Then apply the pose as rest pose for the three bones involved, the master and both inverse kinematic mechanism bow. Then I've created a new custom shape for the master controller to make it more readable. And I've moved all the bones on their layers and I've assigned the equipment to a new bone group so that it's easier to read. This is the end of this video. I hope you've enjoyed it. If you want a breakdown video of the animation, just let me know in the commentary. In the meantime, stay safe. I'll see you in the next one.